Moving to Norway is popular, and that's not surprising, since there are many upsides that make Norway a great choice, not only for visiting, but also for moving there. But what are the upsides of this Scandinavian country? I would like to use the time to show what I believe are the 7 greatest upsides of moving to Norway. If you are interested in moving to any Nordic country, but you do not yet know which country is best for you, you can watch the video on this topic I made a few weeks ago, linked in the video description and in the comments. There I compare all Scandinavian countries with each other. Which country has the world's third largest GDP? Which country does not border India? And which country calls this population pyramid its own? At dailygeographyquiz.com, I've programmed a website that sends you questions just like these via email for free. Simply enter your email address as shown in order to receive a brand new cutting edge geography question so that you'll increase your knowledge about our world day by day. You'll find a link down in the video description. Thanks. The first advantage is the high wage level in Norway. In a global comparison, Norway ranks in the top 10 worldwide by median income. According to a UN report of 2018, Norway, Luxembourg and Switzerland are the only countries in the world that have a gross domestic product per capita of over $70,000 and are not islands or microstates. It should be mentioned that in Norway you pay with the Norwegian krone. 1 euro is equivalent to 10.6 Norwegian krones, 1 US dollar to 8.64 Norwegian krones. The largest industries in Norway are the oil and gas industry, fishing, food processing, shipbuilding and heavy industry. About 50% of all exports are accounted to the oil and gas industry, another large part to the fishing industry. The largest export partners are the United Kingdom, Germany and the Netherlands. And the largest import partners are Sweden, Germany and China. Compared to Germany, Switzerland or Austria, Norway's economy doesn't seem to be diverse. But still, you will probably be able to earn a little more in Norway than in most of the other countries in Europe. For sure, this means that the cost of living in Norway is quite a bit higher. For example, if you live of 2000 euros per month in Berlin, Germany, you'll need a whopping 2743 euros for the same lifestyle in the Norwegian capital named Oslo. This means that life in Oslo is over 37% more expensive than in in Berlin. If you plan to move to Norway, you should just keep that in mind. It certainly is not a bad idea to accumulate some savings before moving to Norway. The freedom to roam, also known as the every man's right, which not only exists in Norway, but also in other Scandinavian countries, Scotland and Switzerland, allows you to camp anywhere in the wild, create a campfire and simply enjoy nature. The freedom to roam truly allows you to feel free in the Norwegian wilderness, so you will not be able to avoid discovering nature for yourself and experiencing unforgettable outdoor activities. Private land and protected national parks are of course excluded to the freedom to roam. In spite of Switzerland, where the monthly health insurance bills need to be paid, the health system in Norway is practically free. Of course this is not a godsend, but the health costs are simply covered by higher taxes. Nevertheless, Norwegians just need to pay an equivalent of about 17 euros or $21 per doctor visit. According to the WHO, the Norwegian health system is ranked 11th worldwide. According to the OECD index of the happiness and well-being of the population of different nations, Norway ranks first among other countries. Life expectancy is 81 years above the OECD average. In terms of life expectancy, Norway ranks fifth worldwide behind Switzerland ranking first, followed by Iceland, Italy and Japan. According to a survey in which people rated their satisfaction with a value between 0 and 10, Norway got a total of 7.5 points. The countries that can keep up with Norway and also achieved 7.5 points are Denmark, Finland, Iceland and Switzerland. By the way, the average is at 6.5. The nature of Norway is another upside. Norway has 47 national parks, 40 of them on the mainland and 7 on Spitsbergen. A total of 7% of the state's territory is protected. There are over 40,000 lakes and far more moors and swamplands in Norway. The number of lakes is lower than in Finland and of course in Canada, but this number is still impressive. What I think is great about the nature in the Scandinavian countries is that there are large areas of untouched nature. Here in Switzerland and probably also in Germany, you won't really find large areas of untouched nature anywhere. Every few kilometers there is a small village, which is annoying when you plan to go on an outdoor wilderness tour. Of course there is not a good or bad climate, it depends on the preferences of every person. Although many people tend to enjoy a warmer, sunnier climate, there are some people who prefer a colder one. The warmest month in Oslo is July with an average maximum temperature of 22.3 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The coldest month is January, in which the average minimum temperature is negative 5.3 degrees Celsius or 22.5 degrees Fahrenheit. In Oslo, you may expect a bit over 4.6 hours of sunshine a day. Security is great in Norway, especially on the countryside. According to the Numbeo Safety Index, the first Norwegian city, called Trotheim, ranks 13th among the safest cities in the world. Norway, like Finland, is a safe country, where you certainly don't have to worry in case your children play in the garden or on the streets. Not only criminality, but also security in a global context is high in Norway. According to the Global Peace Index, Norway ranks 20th in the world. It is behind Sweden and Finland, as well as Switzerland and Austria, but it is still ranking good. Here are some interesting facts about Norway worth knowing. With over 80,000 kilometers, Norway has the second longest coastline of any country in the world. Only Canada has a longer coastline. This is really amazing, especially when you consider that Canada is the world's second largest country while Norway is only the 61st largest. It has such a long coastline mainly because Norway has around 150,000 islands, making it the number one of the country in Europe with the most islands. The term ski is taken from the Norwegian vocabulary and means something like a piece of wood. Obviously, there is no problem in performing all kinds of winter activities in Norway. At the beginning of the video I mentioned that the oil industry is very important in Norway. Ironically, even though Norway is one of the top oil producing countries, gasoline prices in Norway are the 8 highest in the world. 37% of Norwegians have a university degree, so Norway is, at least on paper, the best educated country in Europe. But that is not necessarily a good thing, because this fact leads to a severe shortage of skilled workers and a glut of master degrees. So you can see that Norway is a very attractive destination to move to, especially for people who are close to nature, but also for people who strive for new career opportunities. Do you have any idea which country I should address next? Then feel free to post a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to receiving your comment. See you soon!